you you found those people that like believe in you like yes for those people right now that are in that stage yes where you know they might be working like a corporate job and they're like how the fuck do i find these right people how yeah. the hell am i going to get around this right circle yeah. what do you recommend to those people what did you do that like led you to find the people that were going to you know say you know what you're doing i before? think i think the biggest thing is is just start with who is directly in your vicinity like and what? i think in any job that you do no matter what, you're gonna have the one or two people who really yeah. do well. Like yeah. if you're working at McDonald's, who's the guy who like flips the burgers better than anybody else because yeah. he takes pride in his work? Oh, I've heard yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm to totally to happy. Point, yeah. You know, I could totally be happy with what I have, but that doesn't mean I don't want more for my family yeah. or my friends or my, you know, or people after me that go, you know. Yeah. So we're here today with uh, Dr. Alex Spinoza in uh, Henderson, Las Vegas, at one of your therapy centers. You are a stem cell therapist, mm -hmm. right? That's what you practice. For me, I mean, I know a little bit about stem cell research and kind of what it means, but I do know there's a lot of like controversy. And with that, like, I wanted to ask you, where do you think that controversy stems from? And then like, what do you think people need to actually know about it? Yeah. So I think a large part of the controversy was where we used to get stem cells from in the mm -hmm. U.S. So 20, 30 years ago, we used to get stem cells from embryonic stem cells. That's what they're called, or, or fetal stem cells. Yeah. So that's where you hear in the news uh, people killing babies. Uh, they're harvesting aborted fetuses for stem cell science. That was 30 years ago. That has gone by the wayside. That is no longer a science that's practiced in the United States um, that is no longer legal in the mm -hmm. United States. There are countries around the world who still do it. Mm -hmm. However, in the U.S. it is illegal to practice that type of medicine. Yeah. People still think that, unfortunately, clinics like us are still going out there and paying for aborted fetuses mm -hmm. and stealing babies from places like Planned Parenthood and things like yeah. that. That's not true it probably, whatsoever. It probably doesn't help that South Park is like, you know, telling that story too. <laughs> yeah, so. absol absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't help at all. But that is, that's absolutely untrue. And it, it doesn't happen anymore in the United yeah. States. Uh, most of our, where we get our umbilical cords from, or where we get our stem cells from is from umbilical cords. Mm -hmm. So after mothers give birth to healthy babies, they're actually allowed to donate their umbilical cords to stem cell banks. And this mm -hmm. has been going on for about 30 years or more in the U.S. Used to be only big facilities, Mayo Clinic, uh, Stanford, Harvard, places like that who were collecting stem cell banks. But now almost any hospital, when a mother gives birth, will ask the mother whether or not they're allowed to, or they would like to donate their umbilical cords yeah. or uh, keep their umbilical cords cryogenically frozen for the child to use later on or donate wow, it to science. Yeah. yeah. So the United States actually has the largest umbilical cord bank in the world. Mm -hmm. There's about uh, six, there's about 60,000 umbilical cords and about 6 million different donors already in the umbilical cord banks in the United States. So plenty <laughs> of opportunity for uh, research and um, healing of multiple diseases or at least improvement of multiple mm -hmm. diseases because we can't actually cure anything yet, but improvement of multiple diseases with stem cells. Yeah. Yeah. That because see, I would myself was guilty of that. Mm -hmm. As we were coming over here, I was like, I know that that controversy has to do with the babies. I was like, I myself don't know where they're getting from them, you mm -hmm. know, but yeah. But it's that lack of education, right? But you mentioned that there's so many things that you can cure. Like, what have you seen that is actually the benefit of what you're doing? Yeah, so we we actually treat and we help a lot of people with joint issues. Mm -hmm. So there has been a lot of research, and there, there's research that's been published in medical journals around the world. Uh, European nations, 
um, African nations, Indian nations, they've actually been studying stem cells for way longer than the U.S. has. We're significantly behind everybody else in this type of regenerative therapy. Mm -hmm. And this therapy that's out there has been shown to improve uh, things such as like joint issues, um, healing up of cartilage, healing, healing up of bone. Um, and the things that I've seen the most it help with is uh, a lot of back issues. So mm -hmm. people with degenerative disc disease of the spine, um, osteoporosis of the spine, as well as issues with knees and shoulders uh, and elbows. Mm -hmm. So a lot of joint issues it has significantly, I've seen improve in. Yeah. The, really the only treatments that are FDA approved in the United States with stem cells are uh, two types of stem cells uh, in each in each umbilical cord that we use. Mm -hmm. So there is hematopoietic, which okay. is from the blood, and then there are mesenchymal, which is from the actual tissue. Yeah. So the hematopoietic blood cells are actually used in children's cancers. So it's used to treat leukemia and lymphomas. Wow. So it's treated a lot of different children's cancers. And the mesenchymal stem cells are used to treat bone disorders and issues with joints and shoulders and mm -hmm. things like that. Now there's always new research coming out every single month with yeah. different improvements with um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, things like that. Unfortunately, in the United States, you can't treat any of those diseases. So we usually send people to different countries I, yeah. in order to get treated for those diseases that, because that you can't in the sense. United States. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard of people that actually went to India or places like that Yes, and they get treated and cured for those things. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered why it never happened here, but I guess it's yeah. just because of that. Yeah. Well, a lot of times you can't cure the disease. There's very little diseases you can actually cure. Yeah. Um, even with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, things like that, you can improve them, mm -hmm. but we can't cure any disease yet. Okay. So how did you get into it? And like, why did you decide that this was the right thing for you? So I had always done like hormone therapy, alternative therapies, different, uh, different things like that. Um, I was an, an MD, but I never thought like other MDs. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't always thinking exactly what came out of the book. I was very westernized medicine. I went to Africa and India and trained over oh, there. Okay. Um, I went to medical school in England I, yeah, I as well and that. in Europe. So it was a very different learning experience for me mm. um, so and a came back. very different upbringing. So I brought that over here, a lot of that Eastern medicine over to the United States as part of my training. And uh, as part of that, you always look for alternative therapies, therapies mm -hmm. that are avoiding surgery or avoiding yeah. foreign objects that you're putting in your body, yeah. period. I've had six knee surgeries, I've had a shoulder surgery, and I just got tired of being operated on myself. Uh, and one, one day I had torn rotator cuffs in both of my shoulders and I had had surgery on my right shoulder and it did not turn out well. Is, is, it, is it chronic or is it stuff that you're doing that's... Well, it's just weightlifting and, okay. and sports and athletics and, and just living day-to-day -day life. Yeah. You start to beat up your body over time, yeah. um, trying to take care of your body by working out. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up injecting my own shoulder with stem cells. I had learned about it for a while. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try this. Mm -hmm. I did it myself, injected myself, and after about six months, was completely healed up. Oh. And after that, I was like, you know what? This is the future of medicine. This is what I want to do. If I can heal myself up in six months, imagine what I could do for other people that have these injuries and are on chronic pain medications and our opioid crisis that's just mind boggling right now with everybody just throwing pain medications mm -hmm. at people and all the other things that I could help with yeah. in people's lives. So I started studying. I went back and got my fellowship in stem cell therapy that I'm almost finished with. and. It's just been phenomenal is seeing the results that people get with stem cells and stem cell therapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With there being so much confusion and lack of knowledge in this like subject, yeah. how is it that you get people to come in? Uh, education, really. It's really the way to get anybody to come into, I think, any business mm -hmm. is lots and lots and lots of education. And unlike other businesses, you will get especially in doing alternative medicine mm -hmm. in general, you will get a lot of blowback bet, from yeah. big pharma especially. You'll get a lot of blowback from 
Um, I mean, I have doctors calling me up all the time. They're cussing me out or wow. doctors saying, you know, telling their patients uh, that I'm a snake oil salesman mm. and that I don't treat patients right or that there's not enough research. And I'll show them the thousands of studies that are out there and I'll show them the patients that have significantly improved and, and changed their lives completely. And if you don't go back to school or constantly are a student of life, yeah. especially with medicine, medicine changes so fast, you just get left behind. Yeah. And you have these doctors who are set in their ways. You've been to the doctor, mm -hmm. you see them, they're set in their ways, they do the same thing over and over and over. They never want to learn anything new, which is understandable. You got to school for 30 years and you get out and you figure that's the end. And you don't yeah. want to improve. Yeah. You're like, I'll just learn, I'll stop here. Yeah. There are hundreds of articles that come out every single month on all types of medicine, and it's yeah. hard to keep up sometimes. Yeah, It's just, just so you lose a lot of it. And so if you're not constantly searching and constantly improving yourself, you just stay the same, and that's what a lot of doctors do. Yeah, They just constantly cut it out, and it's up to us to just constantly educate. Yeah. I do educational seminars for people. We do dinners for people. Um, I'm always out speaking with different uh, people, going to different um, educational events mm -hmm. and, and symposiums and stuff talking about stem cells. So, and being on podcasts, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's, that's how you get the word out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on, on that same subject of like growing and expanding. Yes. How old are you, by the way? I'm 33. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your other companies, the yeah. PC Threads and all that stuff, okay. because I, you didn't just stop at the one thing. You know no. I mean? Like that's what, that's what we love is like people that are just insane yeah so I, I totally changed my life around in the past like I would say 24 months now okay. it's, it was about eight, yeah about two years ago when I just decided you know what I want to start working for myself I want to do my own thing I was working in a government facility uh, I was working in a prison so I, I was a prison physician doing a lot of sports medicine patching people up there keeping them from dying yeah it was exciting for a while and I was like you know what I'm in a government job I'm gonna do this for 20 years and I'll retire when I'm 50 and I'm like I'm done I'm, I'll be good yeah and it got boring it got boring it was the same stuff every single day and I wasn't ch improving I wasn't challenging myself and I was fortunate enough to have a very supportive wife that was like hey if you want to do something else let's do it so we actually moved out of the house I, we owned. Mm -hmm. I uh, rented it to save some money yeah. to build up my own business. We lived in a one bedroom. Uh, we rented a one bedroom master bedroom with <sighs> me, my wife, and my dog. And so with four other people living in this five bedroom house, it was pretty wild. Yeah. Um, and we lived there for a year and a half, saving up money. Um, at the during that time, I joined a group called the Arte Syndicate, mm -hmm. which is a group of high-level entrepreneurs that just want to see each other improve and and help each other out, and that really leveled up my thinking. And during that time, I met two other Arte Syndicate members that eventually became my business partners. Mm -hmm. And one of the members who was a physician in Texas called me up one day and he's like, hey, do you like doing medicine? And at the time I was just like, no, I don't really like it. It's just the same stuff, same shit every day. And he's like, you want to do something else? And I was like, yeah. And so we decided to do some sort of athletic clothing company. Mm. And after talking some more, we decided that that should be a medical scrub company. Mm -hmm. So we decided to roll that into uh, an athletic medical scrubs called PC Threads. Mm -hmm. And that took about a year to come to fruition. We opened that in August of 2019. Really? Mm -hmm. That recent? That recent. So it took us about a year wow. to get it launched, to source the material, source the uh, place that was going to produce everything for us, get the material tested, made sure it was antimicrobial, learn everything there is to know about textiles and and get our uh, samples in mm -hmm. and then or, our big order in. And so we launched that in August. Um, and that was a total learning process. But, None yeah. of us in the business had built any type of textiles. So that was completely different out of left wing. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I met another Arte Syndicate member who wanted me to be his medical director. Mm. And I told him no. I told him I got into this group to work for myself and I mm. never was going to work for another person. And he was kind enough to say, well, let's partner up then. <laughs> so. 
he gave me part of his clinics uh -huh. and as a result he became partner in and what we built here mm. and we decided to do hormone therapy and things like that and stem cells just kind of Part of came part of that yeah. and it was like okay well what can we do where we could help a lot of people improve a lot of people's lives right away and it was the hormone therapy the weight loss that we do the vitamins that we do and then it was on top of that just hey we could do stem cells that yeah. would be something also phenomenal that's something cutting edge that not many people know about mm -hmm. and even less people have education in it yeah uh, so that's why I went to get educated back to school about it and everything like that yeah and we launched this office in Las Vegas August 1st of so last August, year. Yeah, yeah, August. So yeah. it was less than six months ago. So same August. Yeah. We, I, in August, I launched the scrub company. I launched the uh, this stem cell company. And then I also became clinic director of his clinics and hormone therapy. So in Denver and Nashville, we have clinics there. Mm -hmm. A month later, we opened our second office in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah. And so. then, yeah, <laughs> and then we will uh, we're, we'll be expanding this year to um, Dallas, Tex uh, uh, Frisco area, mm -hmm. and Dallas and yeah. the surrounding areas around there, and and then just expanding from there. Yeah, I was I was not in doubt at all that yeah. there was more offices coming. Yeah, know? absolutely. This um, year will be a huge year of expansion for us. Yeah, it's it's always incredible that. Um, I mean, we just talked about this with someone else. When you're in the right lane, in the right direction, what's meant for you. The amount of explosive growth that you have yeah yeah and, and you're just like living that you know like yeah and it's it's pretty amazing like everybody it, they say it's like a hockey stick you know you've heard people <laughs> yeah, yeah, say yeah, it's yeah. like a hockey stick that it's just you're you're seeing the same thing over and over and over and then it, it just explodes mm -hmm. and it's it's not like just one hockey stick like now here in in this business we we expanded really quickly and we're just like okay hold up now we need to figure out kind of a uh, baseline way of opening these clinics because we, we were just like let's open them let's figure it out let's just do it as we can but yeah. then we spread ourselves too thin yeah. we learned our lesson and now we're like okay well let's figure out a plan to open each one of these so mm -hmm. now it's building that plan now we're at the bottom of the hockey foundation, stick again yeah, yeah, yeah. and now and then once we have that foundation again it'll be another explosive yeah. Uh, growth so yeah it's 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 just a series of just like hockey sticks up 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 it's it's pretty amazing yeah tell me um ah sorry i had another question for you i was gonna go into like the ed my lead thing yeah go ahead but, but i had another question for you that was interesting oh yes um this is more like on on the the getting to know you side right okay. why are you trying to help people like because the why stem am cell I trying to help yeah people? because the stem cell thing okay. i think is really um, like you said, you, you went to the Western side of medicine, yeah. and if you really didn't care about people, you'd just be like, oh, well, I went to the Western side, and I know something now, and then I can know this one, and I can kind of put it together and you know, just help people that way, right? Yeah. But for you to go to STEM, so it's so radical that yeah. no, most people aren't going to adopt it because they're so skeptical that you like took that. So there's something in you mm -hmm. that I feel is like you really, really want to help people because you went that route. Yeah, I think, honestly... That's a really good question. Hmm. I think the most important thing that we have to do as humans is really to pass on knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think the, that's the most important thing that people have. People say, oh, it's to, uh, the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? It's to procreate, it's to enjoy life. I think the purpose of life really is just to educate uh, the next level of, of, of people, educate the next generation and educate as much people around you if you think about it. Those people that change the world are, have been the greatest educators mm -hmm. in the world. Um, the Einsteins, the, the Nikolai Teslas, the, uh, it, talk about the people now, the Bill Gates, um, the Steve Jobs, they're, they're all great educators, great yeah. orators. Um, I think if you pass along knowledge and the more knowledge you pass along, the more greatness will follow you. Mm -hmm. um, and. I guess that's kind of fulfilling my own ego in a way is that yes I want to be great and I want to be fulfilled by mm -hmm. everybody saying oh yes I learned so much from him and everything like that but I, I want to leave a legacy mm -hmm. in terms of helping people and improving people's lives I don't want to be another doctor that 
passed away or another person that passed away and they were like, oh, well, he didn't really do anything that was totally life-changing or totally uh, altering in terms of the direction of medicine. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with, with going up against what uh, big pharmacies or things like that say is the status quo because it isn't the status quo. We've seen that it hurts mm -hmm. people. And I think the American people, not only, I guess, the American people, but just people in general around the world are realizing and starting to see that they don't have to deal with the same old garbage all the time mm -hmm. of, hey, I don't have to go to the doctor and get the same pain medications. I don't have to get the same story over and over that, hey, you have to settle for surgery in mm -hmm. four or five years. I don't have to have that treatment. There are other alternative therapies around the world. Mm -hmm. If not in this office, other offices around the world that are able to treat me and able to improve my life. Yeah. Because w no matter what people say, although we get old, all the pains and aches and, and disease that comes with aging is not normal. That's not normal aging. Yeah. I don't like that word that, oh, that's just normal when you get older. It's not. It can't be. It's not. It really can. And so we like to keep people um, aging with, with their dignity and aging with health and mm -hmm. aging as vibrant as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of it is, is just aging where you're healthy and I want other people to age well. Yeah. Not just age. Yeah. One of the things that I like the most about you is um, even before I met you, because this is the first time we're meeting. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but through your Instagram, through your social media, there's a presence that you have a very, very good vibe to you, a good like energy to you, right? Thank you. I appreciate um, that. And, you know, like I, I saw like you went to Ed Milet's house and yeah. I thought that was like super cool. And I yeah. think that that's because you were trying to go to those events, right? Mm -hmm. To like really like meet people. But is there someone who's like impacted your life folk like that that has really like moved you to that next level of just like yeah. having that vibe or has that always just been you my parents yeah without a doubt my parents and what did they do yeah like, no was, my parents was... my parents without a doubt my parents always pushed me to be the best i could possibly be mm -hmm. and it wasn't like something that was unattainable that they were like oh if you can't do that then you're worth nothing mm -hmm. it wasn't like that at all it was them constantly building me up but then also if i failed they let me fail mm -hmm. people don't let their kids fail anymore yeah. they get trophies for everything like i lost a lot and i remember my losses and learned way f way more from my losses ever than i did from my wins mm -hmm. as well as they they screamed at me sometimes when i was not giving 110 percent, wow. and they knew it yeah and they absolutely knew it and i knew it and so my parents were driven people. I mean, mm -hmm. they came from my dad's dad left when he was 16 years old. He took care of four siblings, put them all through college and his mom. Mm. I mean, my mom um, came from a family that was from Puerto Rico. I mean, she's a first generation Puerto Rican and, and she helped my family settle here in, in, in Florida in the United States. And uh, she's highly driven, helped my dad build a business. Mm -hmm. my, my parents were 21 and 19 when they had me and I was totally unplanned. Mm -hmm. I fought um, through, gosh, three months of birth control. Mm -hmm. I won <laughs> victoriously, but like they, I was totally unplanned yeah. and they decided to keep me, thank God. Yeah, that's a... and my mom and dad. <laughs> thank you for keeping me. Didn't end up as stem cells. No, um, but they really have always, since I was a kid, supported me in everything I've done, and mm -hmm. then just like pushed me to be as driven as possible because they were super driven as well. They mm -hmm. built their own business and they have a very successful business um, mm -hmm. since they were kids. And then along the way, I've I've had help of a bunch of a bunch of different people who just kind of believed in me in different levels of life in, in different areas and um, I've had a whole bunch of people that didn't believe in me you know um, let's talk about that let's talk about yeah. like um, you you found those people that like believe in you like yes for those people right now that are in that stage yes where you know they might be working like a corporate job and they're like how the fuck do I find these right people how yeah. the hell am I gonna get around this right circle what yeah. do you recommend to those people what did you do that like led you to find the people that were gonna you know, say, you know what you're doing. I think, I think the biggest thing is, is just start with who is directly in your vicinity. Mm 
Yeah. Like a lot of people think, hey, I, I work in a corporate area, you know, everyone around me sucks. Um, hey, I worked in the government, you know, I worked in a government job. I, I, after a while, it was like, man, a lot of people are, they're happy with their job and they don't want to get better and they don't want to push themselves and that's not what I wanted for, the, for my life. It's okay if they wanted that, that's fine. But I found the one or two people in that job who really wanted to push themselves and get to the next level and that's who I gravitated yeah. towards. And I think in any job that you do, no matter what, you're gonna have the one or two people who really yeah. do well. Like yeah. if you're working at McDonald's, who's the guy who like flips the burgers better than anybody else because yeah. he takes pride in his work? Yeah. Um, you know, who's the girl who shows up early or late? I mean, my clinic director is still here. It's fucking almost <laughs> seven o'clock at night. We closed two hours ago. Yeah. Right. It's the the people who are you're gonna who you're gonna be around. Um, that are kind of pushing themselves to that le next level yeah. and they're there and people are all around you yeah. and and a lot of times they're afraid to show that side of them because of exactly what you're saying is that they look around and they see that mediocrity mm -hmm. around them and that's Absolutely. what's supposed to be the status quo and if they try to reach out or improve themselves somehow they're seen as weird or crazy or can't you just be happy with what you mm. have oh i've heard that yeah yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm totally to happy point, yeah. you know i could totally be happy with what i have but that doesn't mean i don't want more for my family yeah. or my friends or my you know or people after me that go you know yeah. you there's always more that can be done for others yeah see so. my, my life changed when i went to a conference but that that's what i had thought yeah right up until you said that mm -hmm. and it's true because my life changed when i created a circle at the job that i was in and took the people that I knew didn't just want to, you know, live with what everybody else was doing. Yeah. And then we kind of just kept pushing each other up until I got to that point where I was like at a conference, right? But it's true. It's like just find the right people, find the right people, get rid of the wrong people, and yeah. you kind of start almost heading towards that direction that you keep saying you want to go in. Absolutely. That's a great point. That's a really, really good point. Absolutely, man. Um, That's awesome. I think we're we're pretty much. I think we went over a little bit. Oh, so good. Yeah, good. yeah. No, this, good. Uh, that was quick, I man. Was, I was so interested in this. Like, I yeah. learned so much, and um, I did some research, but I was like, man, I don't want to get too much into it because yeah. I feel like I'm gonna read the wrong thing. No, no, no. Hit um, what you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything you want to say? Anyone you want to shout out? Like, any final thoughts that mm. you have? No, I'm I'm great, man. Unless you want to do anything, follow me on Instagram. Oh, we're gonna put all your information. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but no, that um. No, I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Honestly, dude, thank you for reaching out to me. I always love doing these. And, and if you ever need anything, you have any, ever have any questions or, yeah. or anything like that with just entrepreneurship in general, or if you need connections to other guys mm -hmm. that want to be on podcasts, you let me know. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely hook you up with yeah. some of the other syndicate members or yeah, Apex good. guys or stuff like that. Yeah. Especially guys in your area. I know like Dan Valentine and stuff like that. Some big guys will be interested okay. in jumping on your podcast for sure yeah that'd be awesome yeah well guys alex spinoza the guy that you need to talk to about and you know what's funny is that through this video i'm sure that there actually are people that are going to be like when the hell are you because we're from california they're gonna be like when are you coming to california yeah. you know, when are you opening? <laughs> Dude, you're gonna have to come to him like yeah like, absolutely come, on, come to vegas come like, to vegas come it's, to it's vegas. not yeah, that far away i mean do, it's you know? sweet here yeah so no thanks for everything man for sure you know, i appreciate the next it one guys um and we're gonna put all his information be sure to follow him have a good one